Oh, hi there, I'm Suze. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. Now, I'm making videos about all the really important things happening in the economy right now. And this video is about something really important, derivatives. Now, I don't know if you know what derivatives are or you want to know, but I think it's really important. So we're going to talk about what they are. So in this video, I'm going to tell you three things I think you need to know about derivatives. That's a move because it's quite windy. So there are a few reasons why I think derivatives are so important. We'll talk about what they actually are in the video. But for now, I just want to say that they're the financial product that a lot of people think caused the 2007-2008 financial crisis, derivatives trading. And you might have derived that because they helped cause a crisis possibly, that they're not being traded anymore. Well, they are actually, and there's some that are being traded that are connected to water. So I don't know where you are, I'm in the UK. It's quite hot actually, and it hasn't been raining much. So it's maybe quite interesting that there's a financial product that's linked to water. Um, interesting, I mean, troubling possibly. But let's not be troubled, let's find out some things about derivatives. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you three things I think you need to know. And something else that you might not need to know but want to know possibly is where I started filming this video so I don't know if you've been to my channel before but hello welcome and um, I really like showing you around interesting places around the UK I'd like to go around the world too but just in the UK right now actually in my flat which isn't all that interesting but I started filming somewhere really interesting and that location is actually where these products derivatives began being traded a really long time ago so I'll just quickly show you where it where that was so I don't know if you know where I am, but um, I'll tell you at the end of the video if you don't know. And look, there's a seagull there. What is that big building? I should know, what is it? St George's Hall. Cheers. So yes, that's a huge hall, St George's Hall, I found out. But um, the hall, the name of the hall isn't the important thing here actually. It was that location, that city, not that hall where derivatives trading started. But since that is a big hall, massive, huge hall, the first thing I think you need to know about derivatives, the first thing I think you need to know is that derivatives trading is massive. It's a huge, huge part of the global economy, massive part of the British economy, big part of the Eurozone, uh, of the US as well. And increasingly, derivatives are being traded in places like Mumbai as well. Now, how big, how big, you might want to know. Well, one statistic said that in one day in London, one type of derivatives trading was 3.6 trillion. Now I've worked out that 3.6 trillion is more than the size of the whole UK economy in a year. So I'll just say it again, in one day, one type of derivatives trading in London was more than the size of the whole of the UK economy in a year. Like, that's weird, isn't it? Very weird. I'm gonna talk about that in the video. What, why, um, where, all those questions. So we'll talk about that in the video. Also at the end of the video, I'll tell you where I started filming, that secret city, that secret location. Oh, is that a strawberry field there? Oh no, I must be mistaken. I must be imagining things. And we'll walk together, shall we? I mean, we can't really walk together because you're there, I'm here, but we could imagine walking together because I wouldn't want you to walk alone. You should never walk alone. That's what some people say. That's a clue about where that city is. Um, but let's leave that city for now. And the next place I want to take you is another city, a very small city, actually. It's the city of London. And the city of London is a city inside London, the city, which City of London is a financial district of London. So it's where one of the main things traded actually is derivatives. So let's go there now and I'll tell you the second thing I think you need to know about derivatives. But what is a derivative? So a derivative is a financial product that's derived its value from something else. If it helps, I'll draw you a diagram. So this diagram is derivative of the work of Edward Munch, the screen. And this is how the word derivative is used in the arts world. So it's a painting or an artist that derives their style from something else. So in the same way, in finance, a financial product derives its value from something else. So it could be from a commodity, like a thing like coffee or grain, or it could be something like a mortgage or a debt. It's actually quite an awkward place to film, to be honest. A lot of quite weird looks. There is a boat and a rough overview there of what derivatives are. Now, when I was watching that back and editing it, I thought, firstly, weird place to film, why does that have to do with that? But secondly, was that a good enough explanation of what derivatives are? Was it? Um, I could tell me more. Do you want to know more? I mean, I thought what well, you might want to know, what I want to know, to be honest, is why are derivatives traded? Why? I'll be honest, that is something that I can't easily tell you, largely because it's a big philosophical debate, really. People have got massively different viewpoints on why derivatives are traded. 
Um, what I could do, do you want a quick overview of the debate? Will that help? We'll see. Some people will tell you that the reason people buy derivatives and the reason derivatives contracts were started really was to help people like farmers, for example. And derivatives contracts in theory can help farmers because a farmer might buy a derivatives contract because they're worried about the thing that they produce, say it's grain, the price changing a lot, for example. So they could, for example, buy a type of derivatives contract called a future. And that future means that a farmer could be guaranteed a certain price for their products, say grain, in the future. That's why it's called a future. And there are other options as well. Options is another type of derivatives contract. Now, that, does that make any sense to you? It is true that in theory, derivatives can help farmers and they can help some individuals protect themselves against risk and against changing prices. So they can be seen as a form of insurance. So that's one viewpoint. Uh, another viewpoint though is quite different and it's that actually derivatives don't really provide a way to manage risk but actually create risk because there's so many derivatives being traded that's all mainly speculation but actually that's one of the most risky things there is in the economy and if you look at who the main people trading derivatives are like in the city of london you're not going to find all that many farmers probably won't find any to be honest really or representing farmers actually you just might find people that never been anywhere near a farm to be honest so so different viewpoints there i mean hey here's another viewpoint warren buffett do you like him he said that derivatives are weapons of mass destruction. He's not a fan. Um, so we don't know if you're a fan of derivatives. Am I a fan? Well, I could do with a fan. I'm very hot. I'm in London. It's really hot and there hasn't been much rain. So I want to give you one more example really, which is water. So why would you want to buy a derivatives contract that derives its value from water? So if you're someone like a business or a farmer who needs access to water in the future, I mean, we all do really, but you might want to buy a derivatives contract based on water to make sure you can get access to water at a decent price in the future. So that's a reason why you might want to buy a derivatives contract based on water. Now, I don't know what you think about that. The US regulators think these products are a great innovation and they're great. The US regulator actually thought the ones based on housing debt, which may have caused the 2007-2008 financial crisis, were a great idea too, to be honest, before the crisis, then they changed their mind. But, but they think they're great. Um, my opinion is they're possibly not so great. But the reason I made this video really is not to slag off derivatives particularly. I can see why they could be useful, but just to point out that I could also see and hope that we might have a future where we could all just have water for free. Um, we don't have to buy financial derivatives contracts to get access to water but that's just my opinion my viewpoint so anyway let's um let's move and go across some different water actually so the last thing i want to do is tell you where i started filming this video where that city was so i'd like to invite you to cross a body of water with me actually so the mersey i would like you to come with me to cross the mersey get a ferry cross the mersey ferry cross the mersey that sounds catchy, sounds fun, doesn't it? Um, could write a song about it. Anyway, that's a clue as to where it was, that city. But let's get on this ferry and cross the Mersey and we will arrive in the city, which you may have guessed by my clues. It's one of my favourite cities actually. It's the city of Liverpool. So let's go there next. And I'll tell you the third thing I think you need to know. So I really want to take you to Liverpool because Liverpool is the place where quite a few people argue that derivatives trading really took off actually a long time ago really before the American Civil War. Now in Liverpool the derivatives trade was the futures market that's one that really took off there and these were derivatives contracts that derived their value from the commodity of cotton. Now I think this is a useful example because I said earlier different viewpoints on who derivatives benefit and what they're good for. And I just wanted to highlight that the theory is often that they benefit farmers. But the practical reality in Liverpool was the people that benefit from the cotton trade were people that probably been nowhere near a cotton farm. And there were people in Liverpool, and of course there weren't cotton farms in the UK. And for some of this time period, the people that were actually doing the work farming cotton were people who were enslaved. So here we have it where some people did make huge profits from derivatives trading, but these were people that were merchants, financial traders, speculators in the city of Liverpool. But these profits were sometimes made at the expense of the lives and freedom of people on the other side of the world. 
Now look, today in Liverpool, so much has changed actually. And Liverpool is a place where they've really dismantled quite a lot of the architecture of this time period. I don't mean they dismantled the buildings, like that's not what's important to be the buildings. Although weirdly they actually have taken down Cotton House that used to have a very grand facade. But anyway, the point is not really the buildings, it's what's happening in the buildings. So if you do go to Cotton House, what you'll find actually, I mean I didn't find anything that was closed when I went there, but that's not the point. The point is that Liverpool isn't a place where there is a lot of derivatives trading anymore. There is some, but nothing like the scale that there used to be. So things have changed, but what I just want to highlight is there was a period when in Cotton House, actually a large period of time really, the whole of the British Empire really, that if you went there, you would find financial traders trading cotton in a way that affected the prices of cotton and had huge impacts on other people's lives around the world. And today, if you go to financial centres like London and other ones, you will find financial traders trading financial products. And I've given you a few examples of derivatives, ones that derive their value from things like grain, housing, water. There are also more abstract things, you know, like interest rates, currencies, debts, that derivative products are based on as well. And these have huge impacts, and we're not often encouraged, I don't think, or told about these things very much, so I think it's quite good to know about them. And hopefully I've told you three things you need to know. There are other things you could know as well. But anyway, um, I think um, it's time to end the video. So here are some books that I've read anyway. So it's time to summarise this video. It's been a video about derivatives, and I've told you three things, as I said, that it's big, that what they are roughly and where they started being traded. And I've had to summarise really derivatives. I'd summarise properly kind of um, like this, really, it's my summary. It's how I feel about derivatives. Um, don't know how you feel about derivatives. Now come on, let's be serious. That was serious, actually. That is my honest feeling about it. But um, you get other people's viewpoints as well. And people have got many viewpoints about derivatives. Some people think it's a useful tool to help manage risk. Other people think it's one of the riskiest things happening in the economy right now. So, range of views there. But actually, I guess one observation I could leave you with is, in the arts world, if you derive your style largely from someone else, you probably, there are some exceptions, but you probably won't be seen as adding much to the art world. I mean, this doesn't add much to the art world, does it? The work of Edward Munch, which this is derived from, does add something, but I don't think I'd get much for this. But do make an offer if you want it. I mean, it's going to go in the bin, realistically. In the economy we've derived, we've decided that people that derive um, products like derivatives get paid a lot more than the people that produce the products that these derivatives derive their value from. And I'm just suggesting a bit of that. It's my, my opinion, just an opinion here, that perhaps it'd be great if more people were producing things like grain or figuring out ways that we could have water freely available um, rather than just producing financial products. But that, again, is just my opinion. And also, what have I produced? This. Um, and a video about derivatives, which, was it useful? Hope so. And also, I'm not having a go at derivatives traders, by the way. I've got friends who are derivatives traders. I've got some friends, too. They've both left derivatives trading. But anyway, you get the point. It's not about individuals. I think it's quite a big part of our economy, to be honest. And it's something that we all need to talk about. That's why I'm in the video. I mean, we're not really, when I'm talking, are you talking? Um, but, you know, I'll leave it there. Um, thanks for watching. Oh, thank you to the people in Liverpool as well. Particularly thanks to the person that handed in my wallet and dropped it. Um, you're probably not watching, but I just wanted to say thank you. I've said it now. But anyway, I'll leave you in Liverpool, actually. That's my mum there down by what's known as the Bucket Fountain. We talked about water quite a lot, haven't we? So I'll leave you there. And um, thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.